We did our Sorry, Bill, I forgot to put the record on. Okay. Go One minute. Okay. Keep going. Keep going, Bill. Okay. I guess I don't know. You got me so mixed up there a little bit, Harry, with these little interruptions. <laughs> anyway, I was trying to be very, very uh, you know good at this, but it says yeah. still says this means being reporter. Uh, I'll let you go by a week for the questions. But I want to close by letting you know my personal style is the way I approach things. I, I try to personalize politics. If people have a problem, they will ask us for things. And I do actually look at this. I think the perfect example is the involvement that uh, the deputy mayor and I had to get involved with the Bavaria meat program. The poor people that were being affected by this were just being bounced all over the place. We knew where to go. We knew how to get it done and we did get it done. I believe in a strong fiscal management program uh, taxpayers only have so much money, so you've got to balance it. And I close out with experience counts. Five minutes, five minutes. Perfect, Bill. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> next is uh, Dave Mendocino. Dave? Dave's on mute, Harriet. Okay. Hang on, let me get the view up. Okay, got it. Okay, are Thank we good? You. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for hosting. I'm running again because there's still so much more work to do, and I still have the same passion, dedication, and commitment to working hard that I have always brought to the council table. I have 15 years' experience on council and have served on numerous boards, such as the health unit. Castle Home, Conservation Authority, the DIA, and Heritage North Bay. And I'm currently clean, involved. Green, I'm current and clean, green, and beautiful. I should have said that <laughs> number one. I'm currently involved in a number of initiatives, such as the creation of an arts hub in our downtown, the implementation of our parks and downtown waterfront master plan, the reconstruction of our downtown, the development of more affordable housing and clean, green, and beautiful. My first platform, and it's a priority for me, and it, I'm hoping it's, it, it's a priority for uh, uh, the next council, is community safety and well-being. During this term of council, municipalities were legislated by the province to develop a community safety and well-being plan. Together with our community partners and stakeholders, the city, the city facilitated this process and council fully endorsed the plan. The plan has four pillars. One, the service network, two, mental health, three, addictions, and four, homelessness. The community has taken action on this plan, such as a 61-bed transitional supportive housing initiative and the Healthy Community Ambassador Program in our downtown. But there's still so much more work to do. I am committed to continue working to make our city as safe a place that it can be, and I have the experience to make sure this plan gets done. The community safety and well-being plan will reduce homelessness, improve connectivity to services, ensure adequate support for the vulnerable in our community, and ensure the safety and well-being of all our citizens. My second platform is accountability. Please hold me accountable to implement the community safety and well-being plan. This is critical. We were legislated to develop it. We need to implement it. Continue working, hold me accountable to continue working hard, always in the best interest of the city. Hold me accountable to being well-prepared and well-informed. Hold me accountable to continue to listen and be engaged. Hold me accountable to continue to be collaborative, working with council, community partners, and citizens. My third platform is growth and affordability. Develop and expand the amenities needed to grow North Bay's tax base. Continue to attract new citizens to North Bay to strengthen the city's labor market. Ensure existing new businesses are able to attract a skilled labor force. The 2023 budget process will start right after the next council is sworn in. I am ready, like I always am, to look for ways at reducing expenses while maintaining the level of services our citizens have come to expect while continuing to make strategic investments. 
on October 24th, I respectfully ask for your vote. You know, Mendo, vote Dave Mendocino. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Okay, next is Lance, Lance Darnell. Lance is uh, new, new to the election can, uh, candidacy, I think. Okay, this is your first. Yes, it is. First opportunity. So go ahead, Lance. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, thank you just for having me here. And it's really, really an honor just to be a part of this. I moved to North Bay when I was 11 years old uh, from North London, Ontario. I went through Mother St. Brides. I, I had Bill as a teacher and uh, went through some other, uh, St. Joseph's Scholar Hall. I then traveled around a lot and had a lot of fun and went into uh, culinary stuff, working in a lot of kitchens, and restaurants, found my way to Mont, Mont Tremblant, uh, stayed there and eventually found my way of working as a sous chef at a prestigious uh, Jewish summer camp. And then I went to Nipissing University, mm -hmm. graduated with, class, uh, in, uh, with distinction in classical studies and minored in political science. I then went and worked a number of jobs, um, including step, at the Stepping Stones Business Incubator at the North Base, at the Northgate Square for a while, and I volunteered for Habitat Humanity as a secretary at the same time. Um, my daughter, my first, my oldest daughter is a special needs child. She has type 1 diabetes, so it's kind of made a little bit harder to do a lot of uh, special stuff outside of working, but uh, that's been something in itself. Uh, I went to, in London, I had some apartments. We, my wife and I sold them, and we moved back up to North Bay. And since then, my second daughter has been born and I decided to be a stay at home dad. And that's been the hardest job. And now that she's four years old, I have the time to do more things. And that's why I'm getting involved, obviously, because it's just so much going involved, going on right now. Uh, I have, my platform is three things. One is openness and inclusion. Uh, in 2020, as you know, North Bay won the Code of Silence Award for Outstanding Achievement in Government Secrecy by the Coalition of Association of uh, Journalists. And this is a prestigious award, but we could obviously do better. The council has made met many steps to make this better, including buying a bunch of new AV equipment. I think we can expand on this by having it so uh, councillors have to do a Q&A session with the public every single maybe week or month uh, to get them more involved and to make see people see the inside, of, they see the process. This could help people get more involved in municipal politics, which is great because as you see, there's 29 people running right now. Uh, there's also town hall sessions, obviously we're, we're a little bit on hold because of COVID and other things, but we could bring those bit back, get the community more involved. When uh, people are involved in something, they get a sense of pride and it's really what we need to solve all of the problems that are going on right now. Uh, the second thing is our green future. Uh, Canada, unfortunately, is one of the largest emitters in, of CO2 and a number of things because we are, we, we are a winter country. But we, and Canada's doing, we're on a process of doing things uh, that we have benchmarks in 2035 and 2050. And we, we need to uh, customize these benchmarks for North Bay so we don't leave our citizens behind and we can lead the way instead of following. Uh, one of the ways is by developing a biodiesel plant. So instead of having to, uh, we, can't, we can't convert all of our uh, trucks and machinery to electricity just doesn't work, our buses as well. One of the ways of still being able to reach a green future is to create a biodiesel plant and produce uh, biodiesel fuel. It can alleviate a lot of the waste in the city, but at the same time, one of the number one things you could use to fuel this is uh, switchgrass, which uh, next time you're driving on the highway, if you just look to the side of you, everywhere is switchgrass. It's, uh, some people estimate it's actually 70% of the biomass of North America. So just between those two things, we can uh, have a clean fuel, powering our trucks and diesel and buses. And that goes to the next thing for a green future is to have a free transit system. A lot of people aren't gonna be able to afford solar car, uh, sorry, electric power cars. So therefore less people have cars, more people will need free uh, transit. Making it free just makes, uh, solves the problem completely. Uh, and then, uh, and if this has been done in a number of places, including uh, Kansas City has done this uh, to alleviate the costs of, of after COVID, not many people were taking transit, so they're trying to get the rates up, but they kept it because people just loved it. Uh, there was concern that would create problems, but they actually found that incidents were down 35% because the number one reason there was incidents on the bus was to do with fares. So no fare, no incidents. Uh, the last thing, or sorry, and there's also uh, another thing quickly is food sovereignty for the green future. Uh, people need to be encouraged to grow food at their own house and stuff like that. Uh, chickens is is a is a, is a, is a, is a tough is a subject, but for instance, Vancouver is now allowing four chickens within reasons, of course, like that. Minute. Because, it, my, oh my goodness. All right, sorry, I'm gonna move later on to uh, the last thing is housing. So uh, I'm going door to door, that's the number one issue by far around the city is, is housing without a doubt. Uh, the Lancet just produced, uh, had a study in 2019 saying that housing first is the way to go. I know that we, there, it's, um, it's a large, it's a, a large issue that needs multiple strategies, but housing first seems to be the number one way to go. There's one issue, one thing they said uh, after six years, they followed people who were doing housing first, and then the treatment as usual. 85% of the people doing housing first were, 
were housed, 60% of the other one were. So were, uh, it was only 60% of the treatment as usual. So it seems to be the way to go. And by having a free transit system, you can open up more of the city, have more housing and stuff like that. So there's more people who don't get stuck in the downtown core, they can move up to enjoy our beautiful city. Uh, and it, on top of that, tiny homes are another thing. It was mentioned several times, tiny homes actually are legal. Uh, Kitchener has a way of putting it into their, uh, putting it into their, uh, their code. They, they, they zone it with additional dwelling units and it's zoned with, with R1 and R7. And, they, and of course you have to apply for, for tiny homes this Five way. Minutes. We, Five minutes. Five minutes. Sorry, Lance. Thank you so much. Boy, you can talk out. <laughs> I almost got it. I got I got a sense of your passion. Thank you for your for for your your speech. Okay, Mark King. Oops. What? This is not working. Sorry. Just a moment. It's okay, Harriet. I think I got it here. Okay, there we go. I think Thank we're uh, I think we're good to go. So I, I did want to start by um, thanking your group. Uh, I often follow uh, your group. Uh, it's pretty amazing, actually, to, uh, to be able to uh, speak to you in this, uh, this type of uh, format. Um, I did want to start uh, about uh, my reasons for uh, wanting to uh, be reelected to city council again. And uh, of course, many of you know that there are a number of unfinished uh, projects that are in the mill, but uh, haven't been completed. And I first wanted to start with uh, the Castle Home project. Uh, certainly a highly uh, contentious project, uh, split the community in many, many ways uh, through that uh, process. Uh, some of my fellow councillors that are here tonight uh, didn't agree with the process. And I must say, um, it was a very, very difficult time trying to move through that process. But I can tell you today, the pile drivers are arriving on site and the construction will go on. It's certainly my preference and hopefully to be back on the uh, Castle Home Board uh, to see the completion of that build in the next four years. I don't doubt that there'll be some bumps in the road as we uh, go through that period, uh, but uh, I'm fully supportive and prepared to uh, go to the wall on this project uh, to make sure that uh, the seniors in this community have an opportunity to, uh, to live in dignity. Um, some of the, uh, the other issues uh, revolve around uh, infrastructure. Uh, I was vice chair over the last term of uh, public works. One of the things that we need to recognize obviously is uh, climate change and what's transpiring in our region. This climate change issue, I think, uh, will unfold uh, in certain ways, not necessarily the change in temperature, but I think uh, rash flooding will take place in many, many locations. This infrastructure must be up to uh, standard, as a matter of fact, oversized to make sure that it doesn't uh, create problems for those people that live in the lower lining uh, areas of the city. Uh, third part of my platform actually revolves around something I talked about probably eight years ago. And I would like to see an internal reevaluation of all city services moving towards a 0% increase in the operating budget over the next number of years. This has been a point that I've uh, pushed forward at the council table uh, constantly. I did not support the last operating budget, which came in at over 6%. Um, our economy now sits on a soaring living cost, fueled by runaway inflation, and people are piling on debt. This financial stress storm is only getting started and is likely to become more difficult for people in the near future. The first step out of financial distress is to take stock of your budget 
and act immediately to take control. This will provide a, bri a brighter uh, future. I just want to talk about some of my credentials and background, obviously. Thank you. My uh, credentials actually uh, are many. I wanted to certainly get into the homeless issue and explain what's uh, transpiring at the uh, Northern Pines facility and how we believe that will change the home situation inside this city. It's only just started. Uh, it will expand uh, through the fall. And I think we're well positioned to at least deal with some of the problems uh, that we see on our streets daily. I did want to take this opportunity again to uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Mark King. I'll try to work hard for you. I'm open, I'm transparent. Transparency is one of the most important items I think that we deal with as city councilors and we need to gain back the trust of the public. Uh, thank you. Right on, five minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Okay, next is Ralph Salantano. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for inviting me to your uh, meeting this morning. Uh, and best wishes to all the other candidates. I've been a part of this community <laughs> since uh, oh, over 60 years, but we're uh, trudging ahead here, trying to make a difference each and every day. Um, my work history, li living in North Bay, I started as a paramedic. I recognize some of the faces on the screen that I've worked with uh, over the years. Uh, from that, I got into life insurance and sales because I had some modest success bringing the million dollar hole in one fundraiser to the city during those uh, heritage festival and air show days. Uh, afterward, uh, pardon? Okay. Afterward, we were engaged in a community process of uh, certain needs in the city. And as a lot of you may have been here, recall, there was a ski hill in North Bay that was closed. Uh, I led as president with my peers, with the service club I represented at the time, the Kiwanis Club of North Bay. Let's try and get this open. And so with working with the Conservation Authority, the city and multi-level uh, government leaders, we applied for funding and the result was we needed to run a million dollar campaign in order to see this ski hill up and running. And this was a beautiful cornerstone piece in the 90s that I was proud to uh, not only initiate, partner, uh, work through all the details and our ski hill is up and running and has been for over 25 years. I'm a doer. I like making things happen here in our city. In my previous years to the ski hill, I was uh, involved with the Optimus Club and on Wallace Road, uh, you may see that there's a double diamond ballpark. I was co-chair of the fundraising on that event. Our service club mentality is a friend of youth and we were able to build a uh, kids ball field. And I was able to partner with the baseball association, advertisers and others who came together as a community in the late eighties, low nineties and made the difference so that we could do what's called sport tourism today. I was able to work with others in the, in the city as well as in the community to establish that field. Other activities that I've been involved with as a community leader, uh, recently we uh, completed the construction of a facility that you living fit folks have enjoyed over the last couple of years while COVID was uh, in our presence. Uh, the facility I'm referencing is the Kiwanis Play World. That facility is multi-generational the Kiwanis Club had a, has a 50 year history of building uh, playground equipment. And with the partnership and the vision, working with the parks manager, Dave Schrader, I was able to, uh, again, fundraise additional funds. And uh, our contribution to that half a million dollar project 
of course, is partnering with the city and the outdoor equipment was installed. So that park, that beautification uh, addresses the inclusivity of physically challenged folks, autistic kids. We resourced uh, 24 different letters of support across the community and engaged uh, donors and sponsors to make it a reality. Um, after my uh, community activity um, and maintaining the COVID process, uh, Clean, Green and Beautiful has been a passion of mine for the last couple of years in which uh, we've grown our teams. Most of you uh, have been a, a part of this and active and I appreciate that. Uh, we are out actively cleaning up the city streets one piece of litter at a time. I want to do more. Uh, I've served on different levels of, uh, of committees. Some of my platforms include, which has already been mentioned, the safety and well-being plan in North Bay, economic growth and seeking job creation opportunities, supporting local businesses, supporting safe neighborhoods, encouraging uh, the, the arts and culture of our community as I've been past chair of the Kiwanis Music Festival. Respecting your tax dollar definitely is on the top of my list when it comes to how we're going to spend the next uh, four years of tax dollars. And of course, we will be celebrating the city's 100th anniversary in North Bay in 2025. I was a part of a convention that was held Canada 150 in 2017. This is a novel but easy approach. If now we can that start was five getting... minutes, sorry. <clears throat> Harriet, you're muted. Go ahead, Sarah. You're muted, sorry. Okay, am I good now? Yes, you're good, thank you. Okay. All right, well, first of all, thank you for having me. This is a big honor and um, I'm really excited to be running for city council. Uh, it's given me an opportunity to really talk to the community as a whole. And um, so first of all, I'm running because um, like many of you, I've seen what's happened with our city in the past four years. And I feel like we need some new voices on council and some change. And, um, you know, I come from, um, I'm from North Bay. I have children here and I'm also running for them because I would really like to teach them and show them what it means to lead and how they can get involved because anyone can get involved and we all have a voice. Um, I also think it's, you know, it's necessary that we have a mother on council. And I've been told not to say this, but We've had plenty of fathers in the city, and I think that moms, moms make millions of decisions every week, and we have to pivot, and we have to listen, and we have to do our best to, you know, work hard, and often we're very tired, but we keep going, and I believe those are some of the skills that I can bring to this job. Um, everyone is concerned about the homeless. I've been talking to numerous agencies around the city. Um, I want to say I'm a little embarrassed because to begin with, I started this campaign saying that we have a rise in violent crime and I've been on the streets and I see that it is not as bad as Nigi would have us believe. Um, it's actually fairly safe. And so I would encourage people to come back downtown. And I think there's some things downtown that we could change. For instance, even when I worked on Fraser Street um, 10 years ago, people wouldn't come to my business because the sidewalks were not maintained in the winter properly. Um, seniors, anyone with a disability could not make it over to snowbanks to get into my door. So that's a small change that we could work with. Um, I don't have any lofty goals beyond, uh, I wanna finesse things and make sure that things get done. One thing we can do is reopen City Hall. I understand it's still closed on account of COVID. I understand that the floor is locked. I've heard from directly from people who work there who feel trapped inside that building. And um, I would suggest we open it up, we open the floors, we invite the public in. Um, we need to get the public in front of council again. It's 
a tragedy that people cannot present without filling out forms and having the city clerk shift through them and choose who can show up there. That to me is not free speech and that is not what North Bay should be about. I'd like to make North Bay greener. I'd like to have green bins. Um, I think we can improve our recycling, definitely. One thing we can do also is generate more income in this city. So it's not just tax dollars because right now it's tax dollars and North Bay Hydro. And Hydro has the ability, it has a side of it where we can privatize and do things. So for instance, let's take the stuff in the green bins. Let's start a topsoil business. You know, the MTO has purchased the old site hospital and um, they're using that because there's aggregate in the soil for roads, but it will not be used for many years. We can make use of that space. Um, you know, initially I had an idea. I know someone who brings in and rescues dogs, um, the Kunhan Rescue. I thought, let's bring in dogs. Let's get an area where we can engage the homeless and have them work with these animals and have them build up a sense of self again. And uh, then I was told I was crazy and that would be too much. But I've since been talking to many people. There's something called whipping, working on organic farms. And there's um, a, a postie, um, like a mail deliverer. She has an organic farm in Corbeil. And she said to me, Sarah, I would pick up people at the Tim Hortons on Castles and I would bring them to work and I would pay them days labor as long as they were clean. Um, I've had other people tell me, I need to build a fence. I could have someone dig my holes. Um, I've had people tell me that, you know, I need firewood chopped. I would definitely have people do this. I One minute. Told, and she told me that in the States, the Home Depots invite people, just like in the olden days where they show up to the docks and they get work. I think that's something we could do. Um, I also think that, uh, you know, I've been watching the videos of council online. We need a tougher council, a council with teeth. It's not afraid to say to the public how much an arena is really going to cost. So for instance, like, the North Bay Memorial Gardens, it could have earned money bringing concerts, but that clock is in the way. No one wants to book it because they can't see the stage. So let's pay the money, let's stop the clock so it's properly raised and we can have concerts there and the city will stop subsidizing that place. So also I wanna hear from you. What do you guys want from me? What can I do for you? Because really, I think one of my most important jobs as an elected official would be to listen to you. And that is something I enjoy doing. I really enjoy connecting with the public. So. Hopefully I can do that for you. And if not, you know, I will continue to work behind the scenes and I will do what I've already done. And that's listen and bring ideas forward. So Five thanks. minutes. Thanks that's so it. much, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna remove the, the uh, spotlight and I'm gonna uh, open to gallery that this is where, I hope I can manage all of this. Um, we're uh, inviting questions. Okay, please stay muted unless you have a question. And then we'll invite, uh, we'll work in reverse. And if any of the, the uh, candidates that are on want to answer, they can just uh, raise their, their emoji hand, okay? So go ahead, Deb, uh, anybody else for questions? Okay, I guess I'm gonna start. And uh, I don't see any hands up. Uh, first question I have is I haven't heard the word, uh, sustainable really mentioned here other than in, in terms of economics. And uh, I, I personally have a passion for growing our city, but I want a growing a sustainable city, which to me means uh, environmental and social prosperity within, or sorry, uh, economic and social prosperity within environmental constraints. We, we have, we have to work, in my mind, we have to work towards uh, um, environmental constraints because we need to survive as a species. Uh, we may live through this, but I don't know if our children will have that opportunity So uh, through climate change. So I, would, I welcome your comments and what your commitment is to the environment going forward. Can I start with that, Harriet? Yes, go ahead. So I've, I, during all my time of council, I've always believed uh, that the environment um, it, it, it is important. Um, it started uh, years ago when um, when uh, the city, with in partnership with North Bay Hydro, um, went up to our landfill start uh, our landfill start site and started converting methane gas into energy. And today, that energy that it's it being converted every day up at the landfill site is powering up 1,200 homes here in the city of North Bay. 
and we are selling that in, um, uh, that energy to the grid and generating income of $2 million a year. The Community and Recreation Center staff did an awesome job of going out and finding a program, a net zero program to build a Community and Recreation Center with no increase to our carbon footprint. We managed to, uh, to obtain $26 million to do that. The plans are being redesigned right now to, uh, to show the next council a net zero facility. Think about that. Net zero, no carbon uh, uh, increase to our, uh, no increase to our carbon footprint. And we've been able to get $26 million now that we don't, we don't have to go uh, alone on building uh, that facility. And of course, the energy park at uh, Thompson Park, that's a, a state of the art. If in, in case of, a, of a, 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 a disaster, the community can go to Memorial Gardens now and the, it'll be, it'll, it, the energy park will ensure that uh, the community can go there and be safe. Thank uh, you. Dave, thank you. Um, can we uh, limit your comments to two minutes? I think you were on, right on there, Dave. So Dorothy, two minutes, okay. Anyone else want to comment? What's your stand on environmental sustainability? Um, I will comment. I believe a lot of it is education. We need to educate the next generation, right? So we need to get into those schools and we need to teach the kids what to do. Um, also, you know, I understand a large part of um, environmental sustainability is uh, reducing emissions. So I would be hopeful that we could have smaller buses, have better public transportation, things like that, right? Um, and uh, of course, focus on clean water. You know, I'm sort of against the development of further homes on Short Lake. I don't think that's good for us. Um, yeah, plant more trees. I understand there was a group up at the old Merrick landfill site with, um, oh, well, anyways, oh, okay. last weekend, yes. And uh, things like that. So thank you. Okay, anyone else? Yes, if I, if I may, um, just what I was okay. saying before about uh, biodiesel. Oh, yeah, Yes, thank you. About what I was saying before about biodiesel, because um, we can't convert all of our buses into ele electro electronic buses. They are making them now that are fairly good, but right now we have a, a fleet of, of diesel buses. So we have to create, we have to power them somehow. So having biodiesel is a way to go, we, especially considering we can make that in the community, taking care of some of the waste. It's what's called a circular economy where we're, we're being self-sufficient within the community. Uh, it's great that the government's putting all these uh, expect, expectations on us and we're building a zero emission or a, sorry, a carbon free rec center. But the people in this community are going to really be affected in, in 10 years when all of a sudden they can't buy a combustion engine car and they're having to rely on other things. So we have to sort of look really far down the road of where, where we're really gonna be and try to help the city get there right now. Uh, one of those ways is a biodiesel plan, another way is free transit. Okay, uh, Mark, did you wanna comment? Mark, you're, you're muted, sorry. Okay, okay I think I'm off there now, thanks, uh, thanks Harriet. Yeah, you know, my support of the capital budget over the last number of years um, is documented. And obviously that, uh, that support relates directly back to the infrastructure, the existing infrastructure that we have in the city. And uh, I believe, and we all know there's a 27, million dollar shortfall uh, that uh, that staff provided to uh, to council uh, virtually at the end of our term that was that was an unknown number at that particular point uh, and it's a big discussion uh, piece inside the uh, community right now about how we pay for that uh, is uh, is it possible to pay for it under the present system we have absolutely not uh, the capital budget will pick away uh, uh, by prioritizing some of the uh, changes in the infrastructure that's required, but we have, uh, we have huge problems. It, and this is what, you know, certainly bothered me about the growth mandate. We're, we're, we're spreading the city out with new growth, but we forgot that there was infrastructure inside the city that had to be replaced. And we let that, uh, we let that drop off. So the next council is going to have to deal with that. 
Uh, just on a second point, if you see the light uh, just behind my left shoulder, Harriet, mm -hmm. that's being generated by uh, solar power backed up by battery. I'm in a home that's completely off grid. So my, my, my personal understanding of what it takes uh, uh, to make this sustainable is I've gone through the route. I know exactly what it takes. It's extremely expensive. I think in the long run, uh, those types of changes will pay off. Uh, but uh, certainly at this point, I don't think we're anywhere near- Two minutes. Uh, we're anywhere near transition uh, with our uh, fleet. Go ahead, Bill. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Thanks very Thank much. Uh, it amazes me sometimes about the facts that come out. It, it really shows that my uh, provincial uh, engagement gives me a lot of answers. But listen, environmentally, we, we've got a strategic bus policy that we brought in where we have buses on call. So we're not sending buses out after certain hours and less peak, off peak hours. We're sending them out on call. So that's cutting down the amount of hours, the amount of time we have to put in. So that's one of the big ones for us. We have a, a very good recycling program. And as you know, we went down to two bags. We didn't ask people to cut down the amount of garbage, just stream it better because we make money out of those recyclables. Uh, we also have, as you know, the mattress program. We've diverted over 20,000 mattresses and the city gets rid of these things and for the cost, we just did it basically below cost, but it got rid of 20,000 mattresses. We have, uh, as you know, Peggy Walsh is always asking us to plant trees. And so we usually back her up and you whenever it's time for that. I'm glad Dave mentioned the flower. A lot of people, what is that thing? Well, it's there for emergencies and it also uh, puts enough power out of there for homes and for the emergency of the arena. Uh, the other one is 1,200 homes being heated by the methane that we produce at the dump, the recovery of it. Like we really do have a good sustainable environmental program here. To mention some of the things, I like to build up, not out. So I'm, I'm really after infilling some of these empty lots that are in the city to try and get them up there, especially the civic hospital site that I think has been sitting there for years doing nothing but it. It's got environmental issues with it. Uh, the equal line that we've been forced into is very restrictive. We really have a tough time working with that one. So we made a presentation in Ottawa for that one with the new minister. So I'm very environmentally involved. I love your clean green, but right now I only got one leg. I broke my ankle. So I'm in the chair I'm in, I'm gonna be here for the whole day. Two Thank minutes. You Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Go ahead, Val. Uh, just a couple of things. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of the good things about sustainability. Uh, in an environmentally friendly community. Uh, Harriet, what I, what I haven't heard is, uh, or have we been doing any pilot studies lately? I and mean, I'm going to look at the fossil fuel or the emissions. I know we have a, a no idling policy in the city with all their equipment, but uh, let's turn to maybe our, our, uh, our contractor of the garbage uh, collections. What would it take when we're talking about safe neighborhoods to walk our garbage cans across the street and have our litter picked up once a week or maybe our recyclables every two weeks and save time and money with garbage trucks going around 3000 miles of city streets collecting garbage. If they get all on one side of the street, perhaps a pilot project would be helpful in seeing that we could save burning fuel from trucks like the garbage trucks. Just an example of ideas that are new or fresh, and maybe it's been tried before, I haven't heard of it. All right, next question. Anna, go ahead, unmute please. Uh, my question is directed towards Mark. Mark, uh, we walk the trails of North Bay as part of our, uh, part of our program, and we witness the impact of homelessness. You mentioned an initiative called Northern Pines. Can you just uh, expand on that just a little bit to let us know what that initiative entails? Sure, I don't mind. I'm glad you asked the question. I know there's a lot of uh, 
misunderstanding uh, on what actually is taking place at that particular location. So it is the rebuild of the OPP station along with a new build adjacent to that. Uh, we originally, uh, at the beginning of this major homeless uh, uh, situation, uh, provided uh, two uh, reconstructed trailers to put the homeless people in from eight o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night. Uh, obviously that situation is not working, uh, but it was a temporary fix. Uh, we received funding from the provincial government uh, through VIC. Quite, quite frankly, they did an excellent job, uh, very cooperative uh, to rebuild the OPP station and also uh, reconstruct a, a brand new addition onto that building. We will be opening a new low barrier shelter on the bottom floor. Uh, that will have clinics and support systems directly 24-7 uh, inside that facility. From that point, if people are able to recover, they then move to 16 transitional supportive uh, apartments, which are full at this particular point in that building. If in fact, and it's under the direction of the crisis center, any of those 16 people are able to live on their own, adjacent to that uh, development is a further 31 small apartments unsupported. So the idea is, to bring people into the low barrier shelter, find the necessary treatment on site, uh, then move them to supportive transitional housing and from there to actual uh, unsupported housing. That's the plan. It's taken three years to put that together. It's been highly expensive. Okay, sorry, uh, Mark, I can we tell have to stop right there. Okay, anyone want to comment on the homelessness situation or any ideas you have regarding, it's a very complex issue. Thank you. I, if, I, if I could just add to, to Mark's comments because uh, you know there's six councillors that sit on DSAB uh, and Nipstein District Housing Corp that have, have been involved in this in Northern Pines, uh, six North Bay city councillors. Um, these are these are the beds that I was speaking about, transitional supportive housing beds. When when an individual makes a decision to transition out of homelessness and addictions, and um, the these beds will provide an environment where they can stay as long as they want with wraparound services that they're going to get in order to transition them back into a normal life. And um, you know we we know the issues that are out there, but I really believe. Uh, through the work that we've done through DSAB and Nipstein District Housing Corp, that uh, these beds, potentially 61 of them, uh, when it's all said and done, will be like a, a, like a mini hospital for individuals with mental health and addictions. Okay. Uh, Debbie Brosco, we have another question here. Go ahead, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you all for coming today. Um, and I know we don't have very much time left, but, uh, and we could talk about homelessness and addictions all day. Uh, can I switch gears here and can I get a few comments regarding taxes in North Bay and in particular property taxes? Okay, who would like to start? Mark, go ahead. Thanks, Harriet. Yeah. Certainly, this is a major concern, and I did mention a 6% increase in the last uh, operating budget. Uh, that's why, and I, and I now see one of the Merrillty uh, uh, um, contenders uh, is talking about a, a complete review uh, of uh, city services to find out uh, whether or not they... Uh, they are comparable with other communities. And uh, obviously this has been a point that, uh, that I've, I've dwelled on probably for the last eight years. We never got to that point. We didn't look at, our, at, our, at the services uh, that are provided by uh, staff. And I hope to see that. And I'm, I'm, I'm 
confident now that there may be enough people on, on council that will support this. It's a simple process. It will be, a, in my mind, a committee of a council. And uh, it, it is, and I can tell you right now, I've heard from some senior staff, they are welcoming this opportunity because it gives them an opportunity to say to the community, we've done this. We've been uh, very, very careful about the dollars. And uh, it may, to a certain extent, uh, change the whole uh, discussion. So I look forward to seeing that happen. Thank you, Mark. Anyone else? So Harriet? Bill? Harriet? Yeah, okay, Bill and then Dave. Thank you. Thank you very much, Harriet. Uh, I understand where Mark's coming from. There was a 6% increase in operating. But if we have to look at the overall picture, the city was able to come in at 3.9 increase. And I want to tell you, Increased assessment, especially in this growth period, is really going to be good because especially with commercial and industrial, it broadens out your tax base. Uh, it's not free though, this stuff, because when you, as you get and build and build and build, you need bigger trucks, you need bigger this. So you have to be able to balance that. But we had 1.5% of that 3.9 was for city services like buses and snow plowing and doing cities and running our staff. One percent was put toward capital planning because we didn't have a good capital plan. We were bouncing it back and forth. We didn't have enough money in the capital plan to actually do things. They just got pushed on, pushed on, pushed on. We now have that budget in place to have a 10 year plan. We will be able to do it. But 2.5% of that 3.9, I'm getting very technical, was from the ABCs. These are things we don't control a lot. Like the police went up a million dollars last year they're $22.5 million on your taxes. DSAB, we did donate 12.2 million to them. Health unit just went, dropped us down from 75.25 to 70.30. North Bay is going to be responsible for another 80% of that 1.7 hit from the government. It's a download. So I think the city is being very, very proactive in what we do within our departments, but we have a lot of outside controls that we really don't have control over. Thank you. Go ahead, Dave. Thanks, Harriet. So uh, as, Thank a, you, Bill. As, a, as a sitting councillor, I've always been um, uh, happy to look at new ways to, uh, to reduce taxes. If, if, um, if the next council brings to the table some ways to, to reduce our expenses, I'm always happy to look at them and, uh, and, 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 uh, and go along if it, makes, if it makes sense. This council was faced with a big financial burden when we first came on board. The, the, the redevelopment of Castle Home and the Community Recreation Center were not, there was no budget for them. Uh, there was, uh, you know, Castle Home itself it co is costing the taxpayer $50 million to develop Castle Home. We had to put together a financing plan during this term of the last four years to pay for that. So that was a big part of the increases. Our, our 2022 increase was actually 3.99%. Um, so uh, you got to, uh, again, a big chunk of that was ca the, the, the Castle Home redevelopment. Obviously making strategic investments is key as well. So always looking for ways to, to reduce taxes. Thank you, Dave. Sarah, nice. Yes, so that's one thing that people don't know or haven't spoken of is Castle Home was in the works. They've known this has been going on for 12 years and no one wanted to address it. So I think one way we can address property taxes is by start opening our eyes and seeing what we need to pay for and start working on them earlier so they're not surprises because Castle Home wasn't a surprise to me and I'm not on council. Um, and that's all I want to say. Okay, thank you. Okay, if you have, oh, I, would, I would like to go ahead. Okay, okay, go ahead, Lance. Uh, sorry, just not Thank to you, beat a dead Dar horse. <laughs> sorry, not to beat a dead horse, but once again, I'm going to just going to reiterate: we have a fleet of trucks, a fleet of buses that are going to use diesel. Cost of gas is going up. So if we're not going to, if we want to keep our artery operating costs low and not raise taxes, producing a locally homegrown sort of fuel is a way to go. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any, I have to go with questions because we only have five minutes left. So does anyone have a question? It there's, has to be a question. There's a question in chat from Joy. Yeah. Uh, she has a point about transportation. Is that the question? Tori? 
Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Harriet. Um, one of the counselors talked about the transportation and the bus um, program. As a driver with a rideshare company, I know from my passengers that one of the biggest issues is the lack of transportation in this city. The, um, the, the um, trying to order a bus after hours is very difficult and makes people have to wait forever. So I'm thankful that it's not working because it just gives me more passengers, but we definitely need to look into that transportation throughout the city. Okay. Can we get some comments from the council uh, candidates, please? Yes, I'd like to comment on that, definitely. Uh, this is just one of the things I wanna do is because the way that things are going, we're gonna have more people needing public transportation, not less. So I think, um, going back to a normal system, expanding the routes and making it free for people so they don't have to worry, especially as people get older and they and they have less money to use. Being able to get around the city free of charge, being able to visit your relatives, being able to go to all these wonderful places in the city is just a wonderful thing. It democratizes tra transportation. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead, Mark. Thanks, Harriet. Yes, actually, to your point, uh, uh, Public Works uh, senior staff met uh, yesterday afternoon. One of the discussions was uh, the bus uh, transit system. Obviously, that's been contracted drastically during COVID because the ridership was so low. We need to understand that that bus system is actually subsidized over $3 million a year. So the, the plan of reducing that, uh, that service was, I think, a good one during COVID. Uh, their recommendation coming forward over the meeting yesterday will be uh, expanding back to somewhat of a, a more normal uh, bus system inside the city. So I think in ending, uh, COVID really played a, played a part in that whole process. Okay, anyone else? Ralph? Just quickly, uh, I want to congratulate those volunteers who motivated themselves to get involved with the active transportation plan. A lot of you are walkers. A lot of you have taken the bicycling. Um, there are more uh, pathways that have been instituted and involved. So, um, yeah, maybe there, there has to be a review of the bus transit uh, issue in light of uh, what we're enjoying today. Okay. Uh, Sarah? Sarah? Yeah, okay, so I understand the city just purchased three more buses that are diesel. Um, I would say let's scrap these giant buses. Let's get vans. We do have dynamic dispatching. Let's get that working better because we can do it. Um, you know, the cab companies do it. I'm sure we could figure it out. That would be my opinion. All right, we have one minute left. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use it to say uh, there's so many issues and uh, I have said this very often to uh, candidates and council members that it takes courage to run for council. Um, you're, you're not, it's, it's not a thank, it's not a thankful job, it's a thankless job. And to, uh, I'm hoping that anyone involved is there for a passion for their community. And uh, personally, I would like to see a community led council. And uh, I, I want to see more, uh, more transparent, open city hall. I've had the opportunity, or uh, I don't know if it's an opportunity or not, to do a presentation to council and not having to, to, to talk about clean, green, beautiful without a PowerPoint, because I wasn't allowed to do that. And I, I think, how do you talk about clean, green, beautiful, about showing uh, photos of how, how, how our community has come together to serve? You know, so those are those are just a few points that I'd like to mention. Um, again, I appreciate the uh, the questions that uh, that people have brought forward, and uh, um, I look forward to the next round, which is uh, on the twenty eighth, and then on October fourth, with uh, six more seven or six or seven more councillors. And again, thank you for for putting your name forward for council. 
it's really heartening to see that many people interested. So thank you to all of you. Thank you, Harriet. Thank you, Harriet. So um, I'll ask the candidate to, to uh, leave the meeting and just to, I'll just address our membership for the moment. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Thank Seriously. you. Thanks so much. Okay. So I am going to head down to um, Lee Park. I'll wait for anyone who is, is there anyone going to walk a little bit today? I will. You people? Okay. I'll see you down there. Um, just I'll a reminder. To everyone, we have 110 people registered for Living Fit, and the numbers have been pretty low. So if there's any issues that you have, please let me know what those are, okay? And we'll see if we can solve that. Uh, any questions about what's coming up? I'll send an email, and I'm going to have a lot in that email. Um, uh, I hope you will go through it carefully and... and um, See what if there are some things that interest you. Okay. Any questions? Have a happy fall day. Enjoy the color change. And uh, I'll see you. I'll see you down at Lee Park. Some of you, anyways, for sure.